What's up guys, Steez Chris here, and today I'm just going to be doing this quick troubleshooting video of what you would do if you run into some problems while trying to flash silverware to your um, flight controllers. Uh, so first off, the main problem I had was with the ST-Link utility, and I'll try see if I can get it, get it to pop up, but... Um, anytime I would go to connect, sometimes it would say no ST link detected, and it was actually plugged in. I don't know why I was saying that. The other times it was when it would say cannot connect the target, the uh, change mode to something hot port or something like that. Basically, what you need to do is you need to go and uninstall this program. So you got Windows, go to Control Panel, um, Programs, and you find SD-Link Utility, uninstall it, uninstall the driver. If you need B, just uninstall all your drivers that are the SD, let me just pull it up here so you can actually see it. Okay, so, you'd basically go and uninstall SD-Link Utility. And what I did was I uninstalled each of these drivers, all of them. This one, yep, just basically all the SD microelectronics, I uninstalled every single one of them. And I plugged my um, SD-Link V2 back into my computer. It, it started to install the driver for it. I went and I reinstalled the SD-Link utility and finally connected my SD-Link V2 and it was game. Everything was working perfectly fine. Now the second problem I was having was within the Keel program um, and it has to do with that driver pack that we installed in part two of the Not Fast Enough Silverware guide. Every time I went to flash, I would always get an error message that would say it can't load to target or something like that. But any error messages at all you get inside of Keel, you will have to uninstall the program, reinstall it again, plug in your SD-Link V2, load up your Silverware file, and as soon as you plug it in, you should be prompt should be prompted to install that driver pack that will allow you to read the um, the SD Link V2. Uh, the other problem with Keel was there wasn't. I don't think there was any other problems with Keel. But you know, if you run into anything, just shoot a comment down um, on the video, and I'll try to figure it out for you. If you get this message, that means your the file where you had it, you've moved it, or you've deleted it. So now you would have to just go back and reopen up your file wherever you have it stored. If you have problems with binding, my my best suggestion to you would be is, if you're not using SBUS or DSMX or DSM2, then you're using one of these Bayang protocols down here. You can go ahead and try them all. But, you know, if you are using the BWOOP flight controller, this Beiyang telemetry auto bind is what you'll be using. I'm not sure about the Yashin E011 and also the 8M Mini. I'm not sure about those protocols because I, I haven't tried those. But if you're using the BWOOP and the Beta FPV Lite flight controller, Beiyang... Where is it? Beiyang uh, Telemetry Auto Bind is the one that you would select. And I mean, of course, if you're using SBUS, it's SBUS. If you're using DSMX, it, those are easy. Those are way easier. And that's for if, um, you know, if you have like an Alien Whoop Zero, you know, and you decide to use one of these on there. The nice thing about this is you can just go ahead and bind your receiver without even having it hooked up to your board you know just hook up a one a slipo bind and then you hook it up to the correct pads on your flight controller and you're good to go but the bayang thing it's it's kind of 
it's kind of annoying. I still don't get why every single time I have to fly, I gotta rebind. I don't get that. If someone knows the answer to that question, please tell me. Um, the other problem was pertaining to the tiny whoop and flying. Let me see if I can find it in here. It was the... So the inverted yaw pit. Um, this was, I undefined this, left the configuration to regular, and all the quad did was spin up in the air doing a full-blown 360 all the way up. Don't know what that was about, because I thought if you took this out, your props go back to the regular prop in configuration, but apparently not. So I just left it on, did my props with the prop out configuration, and you know, you'll see all that in part two also. But I just wish, you know, that there was some way you can just go regular instead of having to run props out. But it's not a big deal. It flies the exact same way. And, you know, I really think that's it. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If there's any more problems that you come across that I haven't touched, let me know and I'll try to make it happen and figure out a solution for you. So get out there, guys, fly some silverware, and have fun.